Welcome everyone to Ladder Daily Digest, um, where we honor creators. And sometimes it's people that have a podcast, sometimes they wrote a book. And we are interviewing Derek today because Derek um, got a hold of me and he said that even though he hadn't really um, been to church much since he was a teenager, he was in his mid 40s and he decided to read the Bible again. And he and the Book of Mormon, and I can let him tell more about that in a little bit. But then he he noticed that some of the stories were similar. And so he started doing his own research and he contacted me. and He wanted to know what I thought about, like doing a study group or something. And I said, well, let's ha- let's do like a study group of two. We'll do a podcast. We'll throw some of the episodes out there, see if people like it, see if they comment and we'll we'll try to every episode we'll try to go over some of the comments that you know were really good that that brought some more information to light and we'll try to you know we're experimenting we're just going to see what happens and Derek welcome to the show and let me know if there's anything else you want to say about you um no that's it uh, just uh i i just want to be clear that i am not a, i'm not a scholar i am not uh, any kind of bible study classes just uh, I just am the average guy. I read I read the books and uh, I noticed some things and this is what I came up with and I'm going to present it to you guys and I, I do want feedback. So I, I very much would like this to be an interactive thing, right? Um, I am not the end all be all of what I'm saying right here. Okay, I, I don't want anybody to uh, I, I want your questions. In fact, throughout this, I will actually ask questions. I will read uh, the actual passages out of the Book of Mormon itself. So, uh, on purpose, I am not going to give Bible passages, though, specifically because I want you guys to read this stuff. I, I want you to to see where I'm coming from, kind of thing, right? And I, I want you to check me. If I'm right. Wrong, and we're going to, we're starting at the beginning. We're, we're starting with uh first Nephi. That's right. First Nephi chapter one, verse one. And so uh, Derek's right, going to so, gonna tell us some of the stuff that he's read and he's going to share what he thought. And like we say, we're, we're just a couple of guys talking and we're just, you know, seeing what happens. Okay, Derek, take okay. it away. All right. So here we go. So, I read the Bible first, and then I read uh, the Book of Mormon. I read the Bible, and literally about th- about a week after I read the Bible, I read the Book of Mormon, and I noticed some things. And this is what I noticed. Uh, we're going to start in chapter one. Um, we're going to look at uh, parallels. Uh, so the first one that I noticed was uh, the pillar of fire. Okay, so the pillar of fire is a parallel to the burning bush in Moses. So if you go to verse 6, chapter 1, in your Book of Mormon, uh, read along with me if you guys got it. If you don't, then uh, you can rewind and watch later. Okay, so to set up the premises here, uh, in some Book of Mormons, it actually gives a a date and a little synopsis, right? right? Uh, That date is very important. Um, it will come into play all throughout this entire thing, these dates, okay? uh, beginning at 650 BC, 600 or 600 slash 600 or, and it goes all the way to the 400s AD. Okay. That's the timeline of the book. Chapter one uh, is begins in 600 AD or slash 50 AD. And we go to verse six. Okay, verse 6, it says, And it came to pass, as he prayed unto the Lord, there came a pillar of fire and dwelt upon a rock before him. And he saw and heard much and became things uh, because of the things which he saw and heard and did. He did quake and trembling exceedingly, kind of how I am right now. (laughs) So anyways, that is the peril of fire or pillar of fire. Um, and the burning bush. Uh, I urge you guys to look at the book of Moses. Uh, that is the 
The books of Moses are the five books of Moses in your Holy Bible, okay? Those first books of Moses arguably can be called the Jewish Torah, okay? That's a very important thing later on, right? Uh, so the Jewish Torah, five books of Moses, Jews, Jewish Torah, uh, look up the burning bush. Second one I noticed was uh, the fallen angels. Okay, so here we are going to read uh, First Nephi chapter 1, 8 through 11, okay? Uh, I'm not going to read the entire thing, um, but one thing that I will do is give you the synopsis of what I'm talking about. Okay, 8 through 11. Um, it starts out, chapter, or verse 8, it says, I am being thus overcome with the Spirit. And he was carried away in the vision, even that he saw the heavens open, and he thought he saw God sitting upon his throne, surrounded with numberless concourses of angels in the attitude of singing and praising their God. And now, and it came to pass, this is verse 9, uh, that he saw one descending, one descending, out of the mist of heaven, and he beheld that his luster was above that of the sun and the noonday. Verse 10, and he saw also saw 12 others okay, following him, and their brightness did exceed that of the stars in the firmament. Verse 11 says he, they walked on the earth. Okay. Uh, here's where some of the explosion comes from. That passage right there is directly for referring to Enoch, okay? Not Enoch, Enoch, okay? Uh, you can actually read the first book of Enoch and you'll see that exact story in there. There's 12 fallen angels. Uh, well, in Enoch, there's 13, 13 angels come down, okay? Um, same thing with that. The first one comes down and there's 12 others. First Nephi chapter 11, or I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 11. Uh, and they came down and went forth upon the face of the earth. And the first came and stood before my father and gave unto him a book. Okay, that's important, right? What happened to uh, Moses? He got tablets. He got the Ten Commandments, okay? the tablets. That's right. He got the tablets and bade him. Uh, that he should read, okay? There's your parallel to the tablets. You can read more in the Bible. Um, I'm not giving the passages on purpose. I'm not a scholar. I want you guys to read this stuff. This is just something that I noticed, okay? Um, I will say that throughout, okay? Uh, so next thing we go, so that's the tablets. Uh, oh, I want to point out one thing about the Book of Enoch. Okay, the Book of Enoch, uh, the first English edition was published in 1821, okay? The Book of Mormon was published in 1830. That's, that's you know, I mean, okay, so let's move on. Okay, so uh, Abraham, the Abraham and Lehi's wives, they're both named Sarah or Sari or you know, whatever. Uh, here's the spelling for Abraham's wife. S-A-R-A-I. Okay. And I want you guys to look these people up yourself and do your own homework. Check me. S uh, Lehi's wife is S-A-R-I-A-H. That's important. The Abraham is important because uh, we'll get we'll get to Abraham in a second. But Abraham's important. Okay, so uh, I guess actually we can talk. Well, yeah, let's talk. Uh, let's talk about Abraham right now. Okay, so um, if you go to verse two in First Nephi, ye I make a record in the language of my father, and consists of the learning of the Jews and the language of the Egyptians. Okay. So that's kind of an important thing right there because uh, 
Um, there is, if you read, there's a couple of books that you can read. Um, I don't know if we want to say the names of them. Uh, you, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to. Yeah, so, okay, so it's called No Man Knows My History. If you read that book, uh, in that book, it says that he took, uh, he found a scroll, an Egyptian scroll behind the ear of a mummy. And that scroll he translated into the book of Abraham. Okay, since then it's been translated and it's not the book of Abraham, it's a, it's a prayer scroll, scroll that was a very common thing, right? Uh, again, check me on my facts here, people. Um, so, yeah, and it turned into the book of Abraham. So, and it was called Reformed yeah, and, Egyptian. Um, bon Brody wrote No Man Knows My History. And That's she. Right. She did a lot of research, and when she wrote her book, in fact, when um, faithful scholar Richard Bushman wrote Rough Stone Rolling in 2004 or five, I think is when it came out, Bon Brody's book actually is probably the, the top cited source from from his book. And so it's a and her, it's a credible, credible, credibly sourced book. And her uncle, I believe, was David O. McKay or something like that, right? That's right. Her uncle was David O. McKay. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, uh, back to this. Um, he translated uh, that scroll into 11 different languages. It said. Okay. Again, you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. Put it in the chats below. Um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I want your feedback on this stuff. So, so you know, let me know. All right, so moving on. Uh, so now we're going to get into uh, Zedekiah. Okay, if you go to verse 4, it talks about Zedekiah. Okay, so Zedekiah is actually a real person. Um, in recorded history, he is legitimately a real person. Okay, uh, He was the king of Judah. Uh, his name was originally uh, Matana. I'm I'm killing these names, so bear with me. Uh, Matana. It's M A T T A N I A H, or Matanyahu. A E T T A N Y A H U, or uh, Matanias. A uh, M A T T A H. Let me start over with that one. A M A T T H A N I A S. Uh, that was his original name. Uh, his uncle, uh, which um, we'll get to in a second, uh, changed his name once he became the ruler to Zedekiah. Okay. Um, his reign was 597, 597 through 586 BC. Okay, these dates are important. Remember, I went back to the Book of Mormon with the date in the synopsis, right? Uh, Lehi lived in the first year of the reign of Zedekiah in Judah, okay? This is all in the first chapter. Everything I'm talking about right now is in the first chapter of the first book, only, only, okay? All right, so then uh, first year of Judah, so that becomes important because, uh, well, let's talk some more about Zedekiah. Uh, his reign was in the beginning of the first part of the Babylonian uh, exile against the Jews, right? So that's in verse 13. If you go to verse 13, there's a reference to Babylon. Babylon. I'll let you guys read that because it's actually good. The Book of Mormon is actually a really good book. So I really urge people to read this book. It's a great book. There are some boring parts, but but what book doesn't have boring parts, right? So read the book. It's a great book. All right. So anyways, uh, Zedekiah also has two sons in world history, outside sources that literally have nothing to do with the Bible because Zedekiah is in the Bible also, right? Uh, 
you can look it up yourselves. Uh, hint Kings. Uh, so Zedek, uh, Zedekiah uh, um, had two sons in world history. Even in the Bible, he's got two sons. Uh, you can look anywhere, Google it, read any book. Like it's it's a real person, okay? And so then uh, that's important because in the Book of Mormon, he's got three sons, okay? Three sons. Now I cannot find anything outside of Mormon websites that says he has three sons. BYU has a post that says biblical scholarships now recognize the fact that there's three sons. Okay, well, that's not true. <laughs> there's not three sons. Uh, his son's name, uh, we'll get to in a second. Okay, so let me uh, scroll through my papers here. Had you said William um, F. in a prior talk, you said the two his two sons actually perished. Yes, uh, um, we'll get to that in a second. But yes, okay, you're okay. right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so William F. Albright says in Hebrew. Okay, William F. Albright was a scholar in like the early 1800s. Uh, I don't know if I'd call him a scholar. He was a, uh, I guess you would call him a scholar, right? Uh, he wrote a lot of books and studied a lot of stuff. So you can look him up. That's why I said his name. Uh, so anyways, uh, in Hebrew, Zedekiah means, okay, you ready? Y-H-W-Y. That's Yahweh. That means my righteousness, okay? This, I, I'm sure I'm gonna get some questions on this one. Okay, so now we get back to uh, the son story. So if you look up uh, Jehoiachan, Jehoiachan is J-E-H-O-I-A-C-H-I-N. This is Zedekiah's uncle. Okay, so uh, Zedekiah in Hebrew means Yahweh, Y-H-W-H. Uh, one thing you have to read is we're very much dealing with Jewish literature, okay? Uh, the five books of Moses is, is the Torah, right? Well, what is the Torah? It's, you know, it's... It, it's the Jewish Torah. It's the five books of Moses, right? Okay, so you have to understand that when you very much a Jewish thing. Elohim. So Yahweh, Elohim, these names. Uh, you can go down that rabbit hole. Uh, you know, El, Enlil, all of these kinds of things, right? Uh, there's the cult of Yahweh. I mean, it's great stuff. Great stuff. Okay, so anyways. Uh, uh, so now we get to the sons. Uh, I, I think I said uh, Jehoachin already. I spelled out his name. Uh, um, um, he this he's important because he changed or he changed uh, Zedekiah's name to Zedekiah whenever he Zedekiah took over as the ruler, right? Um, so he also was carried off in chains as Zedekiah was both in the Book of Mormon and in the Bible uh, and in real life world history. Okay? The only thing that really changes is the sons. Uh, the Book of Mormon specifically says he has three sons where like the rest of world history, uh, you cannot find the third son outside of Mormonism, right? Um, if anybody can do that, please put it in the chats below and, and I will, you know, I'll, I'll change my mind, you know. Um, so his son's name is Mulek. Okay, so Mulek uh, has a son, or I mean, not a son, uh, it says a descendant. Uh, on the Mormon sites, it says descendant of Mulek is Zarahemla. Okay, 
So I'm arguing that Mulek and Zarahemla don't even exist in real life. These are non historical characters, right? Because they're specific to the Book of Mormon. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, a thought that I just had was uh, there are some really great authors, modern day authors. Uh, I really like James Tabor. You can look at him. Uh, also, uh, one of my all-time favorites is Richard Carrier. Uh, I know uh, Gene has heard of Richard Carrier, so um, great stuff. Uh, they're actual scholar. They are actual scholars. They're PhDs. They're these kinds of things, right? Um, and they're great stuff. They have peer-reviewed. Uh, Richard Carrier is big on peer-reviewed things. So, you know, um, and then, <clears throat> all right. So, anyways, I got some some things uh we're gonna go to verse 19 okay go to verse 19 in the book of mormon and i'm gonna read it to you it says and it came to pass that the jews did mock him because of the things which he testified of them for he truly testified of their wickedness these are the jews he's talking about keep in mind using jewish literature um their wickedness and their abominations. And he testified that the things which he saw and heard and also the things which he read in the book, uh, we'll get back to the book here in a second, uh, manifested plenty, uh, plainly of the coming of the Messiah. So there's your very first mention of the Messiah in the Book of Mormon, okay? Chapter 19. Now you these are the dates again. Okay, you got to come into the dates. What's what's going on in this time? What's what's happening? Who's doing what? Right? We're talking about the Bible here, the Messiah. Okay, he's plainly calling for the Son of Christ to come. Okay, he's saying a New Testament times. He's calling for the son of christ the son of christ did not exist in new testament times or i mean i'm sorry old testament times check that old testament times there was no in the bible if you read the old testament uh there is no mention of any kind of jesus or nothing literally nothing anything in the new testament literally is not mentioned whatsoever in the old testament so you, so the old testament was wrote first and then the new testament was written later so you there's nothing there's nothing in the 100%. old testament that so says therefore there's going to be a son of god jeremiah is the closest thing that you're going to come right but the way that i read it is in the context context is very important okay you have to know the stories in this Bible. You can't just flip to the page and say, oh, there it is. Okay, because that is totally taken out of context, right? Because they talk about Jeremiah through a lot of different things, right? And so he's doing a lot of different things. And so when you read that, you're thinking, oh, man, there's the son of Christ. See right there, he's prophesizing. Well, he's not. Read it in text. You're, you're the saying, you're I saying it was, the, the son of Christ, but you mean the son of God. No, I'm saying Jesus Christ. Right, but it sounds like you're saying the Son Jesus of Christ. Christ. Right. Oh, am I? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm talking too fast. Okay. Sure. And I'm nervous. Just too. wanted to make it just <laughs> want to make it clear that you're talking about Jesus Christ or as the Son of God. Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll keep it simple. Jesus Christ, uh, in the we're literally talking about the name Messiah right now. Everybody so you're, knows. You're, okay, you're saying that they, the New Testament, they say the Messiah. The New Testament writers are saying that the Messiah in the Old Testament is Jesus, even though that's not what the Old Testament writers were thinking when they wrote about a Messiah. If you read Jeremiah, he's, this is the way I take it, 
Okay, this is, uh, do not take my word for this. Read it yourself, okay? Uh, the way I read it is he's fed up. He's tired. He's, ah, one of these days, somebody's going to come and fix all this. That's, that's what he's saying in that text, right? He's not literally saying, you know, the son, you know, Jesus Christ is going to come, right? That's the way I read it. I could be totally off on that if, you know, I, I've read it a couple of times and that's how I read it. So uh, um, I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm open for debate or not debate, discussion. I don't want right. to debate anybody. You're, you're saying Jeremiah this. isn't saying in a few hundred years, um, look to a savior coming to the world to save the people from something. He's just saying there's a lot of problems around me now and someday right. I hope somebody's going to fix it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is because I, I'm, I'm a nerd with this stuff, right? So I like all the background noise that's going on, right? I like the stuff that like where they're at, what they're doing, what, what the other people are doing. Right. That's, and so like there's a lot of other texts and stuff like that that you can read, that you can look at. Uh, there, nobody really knows for sure. Nobody actually knows when the Old Testament was written. We have a pretty good idea about the New Testament. It was written in the first century A.D., right, uh, by the Greeks. It was written in Greek, right, so it's a pretty strong clue. So, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so you guys can look it up, but I'm going to continue on with my uh, presentation here. Okay, so uh, that's the Messiah, verse 19. Uh, I hesitate on this one because this one is, this one is pretty sensitive, okay? It's, uh, yeah, I don't even really know if I want to say it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say it anyways. Uh, it's it's pretty anti-Semitic. The whole thing is about the Jews, right, and how bad they are. And so, but they're using you're Jewish talking literature. About, the, you're the talking five about books of in, Moses in Nephi, the Book of Mormon. There's a, there's a section of the Book of Mormon in Nephi yeah. that is very anti-Jew. We'll say. Uh, just read read the first chapter and it's in, or, yeah literally read the first chapter in its entirety and why is Nephi leaving Jerusalem? Ask yourself that. I'll let you think about that one for a minute. I'll let it simmer, and I'm going to continue on. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, uh, a lot of truth claims beginning the very first. You know, for what I say is true. I I you know I write this in my own hand. Um, the first actual paragraph, the first, you know, verse one, uh, I, Nephi, having been born of, of godly parents, therefore I was taught someone in all the learnings of my father and having so, having seen many afflictions in the course of my days nonetheless having been highly favored of the lord and in all my days ye having had a great knowledge of the goodness and the mysteries of god therefore i am i make a record for my proceedings in my days right it's a lot of uh boasting you know like uh truth claims convincing the reader um you know what i say is true right a lot of that stuff and that's throughout the whole book Throughout the whole book. Um, all right. So then the next one we go down to is uh, we're going to go to verse 17. Okay. We're still in First Nephi, chapter 1. All of this is in chapter 1. Everything I'm saying here is strictly in chapter 1. I am not a scholar. I want your feedback. Okay. I, I want to learn too. So teach me. Uh, yeah, teach me. So anyways, chapter 17, or verse 17. 
but I shall make an account of my proceedings. I shall, uh, okay, uh, let's see. Well, we're going to actually start on 16, sorry, 16. And now I, Nephi, do not make a full account of the things which my father hath written, right? He's writing stuff, okay? He's writing stuff. For he hath written many things which he saw in visions and in dreams. And he also hath written many things which he prophesies and spake unto his children, of which I shall make a full account, or I shall not make a full account. So he wrote some of the things, okay? We're going to keep going 17. But I shall make an account of my proceedings in the days. Behold, I make an abridgment. Uh, that's like a copy. Okay, it's like you know, he's making a copy. An abridgment of the record of my father upon plates. There's your first mention of the golden plates, uh, but they're not gold, they're brass. Okay, uh, which I have made, which I have made, some more convinced stuff, right? Uh, which I have made with mine own hand. Wherefore, after I have abridged the record of my father, then I will make an account of my own life. Uh, uh, where's the book at? Remember the angels came down and gave him a book? The first angel came down and gave Lehi a book. Um, so if Nephi, if Nephi makes plates, and he wrote some of his father's stuff. Okay, he has them in his possession, right? He's writing, he's copying, making an abridgment. He's got them in his possession. Writes them down on the plates, goes and buries the plates. We'll get into this later on. Uh, if we should make a, you know, there's there's a whole lot more, folks. Stay tuned. Okay, I got a lot. I got an entire book. <laughs> okay, so... Why would he bury those writings or something like that? You got to remember we're in 6 AD, right? Or 6 BC. Uh, they're using papyrus and things like that, you know? Um, so why wouldn't he put those in there? And, you know, can, can the church provide these records? Can they provide the book? Uh, because I literally cannot find any outside source, outside source that, that has any of this stuff, right? Any outside sources that's very important see the bible you can literally go anywhere you can google it you can get books upon books upon books there's outside sources right with mormonism there's no there's literally no outside sources of any kind that are not mormons that are producing mormon stuff so uh that's not a very good outside source <laughs> All right. So anyways, uh, as we keep going, um, the first mention of the plates. Uh, so is there anybody that's before Moses? Okay. Remember, uh, by the way, since when we were talking about the, the Bible and the Old Testament was written first and then the New Testament was written later. Um, one of the clues of how you can know that is when you read the Bible, the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament are very, very separate books. Read the Old Testament and it's clearly has an agenda. Okay. It's, it's pushing God. God protects only the Jews, right? Um, the New Testament uh says the people in the old testament are prophesizing the new testament they're prophesizing the coming of jesus which is what we get back into jeremiah about right so they're they're prophesizing jesus is what they're saying okay the book of mormon i i don't i hope you followed me on that the old testament's first the new testament is next the new testament is using the old testament to legitimize itself the new testament enter the book of mormon it does the same thing 
but it, it takes the entire Bible as a whole, right? And it combines the New Testament and the Old Testament to prophesy the coming of. Okay, this is a. Uh, I, I want some of this stuff to marinate into some of you guys. And if some of you guys actually don't know the answer to that, read the Book of Mormon. I highly recommend this book. This is a fantastic read. Wars and the Battles. Whew, that's a, a, a Noah. We'll talk some stuff about Noah. Uh, we got some stuff to talk about Noah. Okay, so uh, are there? Is there anybody before Moses? Well, yes, there is. Uh, there's a whole lot of Moseses before Moses. Okay, with an S. Moseses before Moses. Okay, here's a couple of examples. Uh, you guys can look this up. I'm not going to go into great detail on these. People, I will give you a couple of just, you know, little things, but uh, uh, I want you to look them up and read for yourself. Okay, so Sargon the Great, he's also known as Sargon of Akkad, okay? Uh, his reign was 24, uh, 23rd century BC. That's a long time ago, okay? He was floated in a reed basket down a river. Uh, Picked up by a woman. Um, the whole woman thing is a whole rat one, by the way. Uh, pharaohs. <laughs> um, all right. So, anyways, uh, what happened to Moses? Moses was put in a reed basket, right? Um, there's also another, another one. Uh, one thing about Sargon the Great is he is actually a real person in real life, real life history. Okay. Um, he was the Sumerian king, right? He was the king of Sumer. He was the first person in history to rule what you would call an actual empire. Okay, the very first empire in world history was Sargon the Great, Sargon of Akkad. Uh, look that up. You're you're welcome to look it up. He is a fascinating character, believe me. Um, also, we're gonna go to Krishna. Uh, Hang on a second. I'm still kind of shaky. <laughs> so Krishna. Krishna is in India. Again, everybody, I am not a scholar. That's right. Krishna is in India. Uh, you guys know who Krishna is. If you don't, uh, feel free to look. It, it, that is an incredible epic. Do, uh, there's so much when, to learn there. It's insane. So, when uh, does India say Krishna writings yeah. came out. So when they came out, uh, nobody really knows. There's there's guesstimations and stuff like that. But Krishna as a person, they do believe that this is a real actual person. Rather you believe that or this is a real person in the year 3200 to 3100 BC. Okay. Krishna was also put into a reed basket, um, floated down a river. Um, this motif of flotation down a river in, in baskets, right? Uh, <laughs> we call them basket cases. <laughs> uh, so um, these kinds of things, they uh, it, it's a very popular motif of the time, right? Okay, so. Moving along, as for the actual biblical character of Moses, okay, um, as far as the mention of the name Moses, as far as we know him in the Bible as Moses, right, uh, the very earliest outside source other than the Bible that we have is, uh, uh, it's called the Bibliotheca Historica. Okay, and the Library of History. They're two separate books. The author's name is Diodorus Siculus. Diodorus is D I A D O R U S. Siculus, S I C U L U S. 
That's the author. The book is called, I'm going to spell it because I, I super cannot pronounce this word. It, it just, it messes with me. So it's Biblio, B-I-B-L-I-O, T-H-E-C-E, -E, Historica, okay? H-I-S-T-O-R-I-C-K, okay? Uh, and then the Library of History. That is the library of history specifically, that's mention of a biblical Noah outside of the Bible, right? Of, of this person. Okay. Um he wrote 40 books. Um, only 15 of those books survive. Okay. Uh he was a historian. Um his he lived in the in they they believe that he lived around uh 80 to 20 bc right so his works end in about uh, the um the library of history uh that that around the years the year 60 okay uh, it's it's argued 59 or 60 i mean you know uh, whatever right so bc Okay, uh, well, is what he's talking about, his storyline, is it's between the Trojan Wars, right? That's, and, and he's an actual historian, right? He's an actual real life person writing about this stuff, right? Um, if he lived in the year 80 to 20, he literally lived in the time of, Bible, the New Testament was written. It was no, I'm lying about that. I'm lying about that. BC, yeah, just before 80 to 20 BC. Yes, yes, just before uh, the the New Testament was the first century AD. Okay, uh, clarify that. Okay, the time frame of his writings are said to be from the year 480 to 54 BC. That's the time frame that he's writing about. Okay. Obviously, yeah, so he's, he was like, not he's like he's like compiling other people's writings in a way. Yes, yes, the, but he, yeah, he, you know, he's got his own stuff, but yeah, he's doing other people's stuff. Right. They're, they're all everybody's, everybody's doing other stuff. That's where when you, you get into this stuff, you'll you'll start to see that there's other things happening. There's the cult of Yahweh, the cult of Mithras. Uh, there's literally so much stuff going on at this time, and they're they're taking this from this group, this from this group. Uh, the Minoans, like look at Manny, okay, look at these kinds of people, right? Um, these are fantastic stories. Manny, for example, I'm going to kind of go off script here. Manny, for example, favorite stories. He's skinned alive. Can you believe it? He's skinned alive. And they take his skin and they blow it up like a balloon. And then they drape it over the gates to warn other people not to come in. Is that fantastic? Rather you believe the stuff or not. It's just a great story, right? I mean, it's it's insane. It's a great story. And all of these are lots of sex, murder, violence, all kinds of stuff, war. Like, I mean, you name it. This stuff is in these old stories, right? And this made it back to... Uh, the Bible, you know, a very tamed down version, compiled version. This is whoever wrote the Old Testament. This is their version of stories. Okay. And we'll get into that in a second. It's almost like pulp fiction oh. when you think about it. You know, yeah. Exciting. I mean, think of it. You know, think of what they're doing. There's there's entire cults of nothing but women. There's entire cults of nothing but men. And when I say cult because it, uh, not in the think of a cult today right these are religious know, this, groups it, or religious groups right thoughts. right but there was no word for religion back then right religion is a very our time you know thing but you know if, that, that if you want to if you yes. want to write a book that people read you don't say oh a guy planted seeds and then the next yeah. day he watered them and he kept on watering them, and then the yeah, plants you gotta grew, make it. and then he picked them, right? 
that's yeah. not as entertaining as war and sex and yeah all the yeah. other I mean, things that happen. You got to make it interesting. We'll <laughs> yeah. we'll get into the layout of these in a second, but you know, you got to one up the next the guy before you. You got to be better, bigger, grander. Right. right. That's not the real God. Our God is the real God. And this is what he can do. Your God can only do this. You know, ours can do this. I mean, is Zeus around anymore? My God. Uh, can be one thing God. in the Bible, and this is one of my favorites. I, I love this. Uh, does anybody believe in Apollo? Okay. I, I Look don't up believe Apollo. in Zeus. I, I don't believe in Zeus because people have told me okay. he's a myth. That's the only reason why I don't believe him. If you believe in the Bible, if you believe in God, the biblical God, you have to believe in Apollo. You have to. Do you want to know why? Because in the Bible, God actually has a conversation with Apollo. I'm going to paraphrase, and you can look this up yourself. It's, it's It wouldn't be on this thing if, if what I wasn't saying was real. But you can look this up, and you can actually say, like, uh, I'm going to paraphrase, but God says to Apollo, hey, Apollo, those people down there are having some problems. I need you to go help them. And Apollo says, ah, I'm busy right now. I'll get However you want to look at that, that's a conversation. He's having a conversation with Apollo. Is Apollo real? You decide. I'll leave it up to you. Okay, so moving along here. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about uh, Manith Manito. Manito. Manito is M A N. E T H O. Math Manito is also uh, refers uh, to a Moses character, right? Um, the, the aspects of this guy is he was an in, he was an Egyptian priest. Uh, he's a real life person in real world history. Okay, uh, he lived in the third century BC in the Hellenistic period, right? He wrote, a, he wrote a book, and it's called the, the Agapitica or something like that. I, I don't know. I'll spell it. It's A-E-G-Y-P-T-I-A-C-A. -A -A. Okay. Uh, so he's a historian, and this is actually a really popular book. I just – I can't pronounce these words, right? Yeah. So anyways, uh, he's a – he's a – he does the history of Egypt uh, in Greek, okay? Uh, he's a major source for the, the reign of kings, okay? He does a, or I mean, yeah, the reign of kings, the king's list, right? Um, the king's list of ancient Egypt. He's, how he got started was he started the king's list, okay? You can look him up. You can read his story. Very interesting story. But he uh, talks about a Moses character. A Moses like character, okay? Um, all throughout that book, it, it's it's pretty an amazing thing. But so, um, if you look up Manito, you're gonna you're gonna come across a, a guy named Herodotus, okay? Um, that is some very interesting stuff right there, okay? I I'm not gonna go into Herodotus, but uh, you're, you can find out, you can literally look this stuff up, podcast, there's all kinds of stuff you can find on this. People. Heliopolis. Heliopolis actually changed his name to Moses, right? Uh, Josephus says this is a folklore. Okay. Um, so you can look up Heliopolis yourself, look up Josephus. Josephus has some incredible books, The War of the Jews. It's a phenomenal book. Antiquity, it's actually uh, uh, seven books, I think, is The War of the Jews. Uh, the Book of Antiquities is uh, 20 books, I believe. Those on audibles, you can get those on all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, you know, they're fascinating books. 
uh, and you will see correlations to this book. Uh, there's arguments of Josephus being pro-Roman or pro-Jewish. There's, you know, he was, Josephus was a Jewish, he was in the Jewish wars. Then he got captured by the Romans. Uh, great story. Uh, there's also some Jesus characters in the War of the Jews, and you're, you can decide if that is actually the Jesus Christ that's in the Bible. Uh, very similar stuff. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about the uh, mythic hero archetype. The mythic hero archetype, also known as the hero pattern. Um, it happens so much in all of these stories, right? All of them, every one of them, that uh, they actually, in, in our time, right, they actually must, and it's called the hero pattern, the hero archetype, right? Um, so uh, on the scale of the hero archetype, uh, Moses ranks the highest above all of them. He checks all the boxes. I think the next closest one, I guess, but the next closest one is, I think, 12 is the next closest one. Uh, Moses, I think, gets like 24, 22, 24, something like that. He, he, he literally scores the highest, okay? All right, so uh, Odysseus, right? Odysseus uh, also refers to a... Uh, a Moses character, okay? Odysseus in Greek is, uh, uh, that's his name in Greek, Odysseus. In Latin, it's Ulysses, okay? Ulysses in Latin, okay? And the thing about Odysseus is, well, you'll have to read it for yourself and you'll see the thing, but there, it's the Odyssey and the Iliad by Homer. Read those and you'll see some very striking similarities to Moses. Okay, um, Xerxes, son of Darius, same thing. I'll let you read that. Um, one thing about the fall, uh, well, so I want to say Xerxes and Xerius, uh, Darius and Xerxes, their father and son. Uh, so, yeah, you can look those up and you can see the resemblance. Uh, one thing I want to say about the angels, the fallen angels is in uh, uh the Book of Enoch, uh, the main angel, the main one, is uh, led by Tamozorella, T-E-M-O-Z-A-R-E-L-A. -E -E um, I'm not sure at that point. I don't remember in the way the angel's name. I, I, I think it I, – I don't remember if – I don't know. We'll get there. We're going to do chapters and we're going to do all kinds of stuff. And it's just escaping my mind right now. I, I can't remember. But um, I would like to do this literally chapter by chapter. First book of Nephi, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. And, uh, you know, just keep going. But that's the end of my presentation. There you go. I, I talked about maybe, <clears throat> you know, stopping it here and there, but I thought maybe it'd be better to hit, hit all the points. And I was wondering if you, do you think you could like take two minutes and synopsize all that just into the, how all those points that you sort of outlined sort of relate into like one thought, like, like, so there's like, so there's the hero's journey, yeah. Right, it is a lot like stories, maybe like Superman, of Nephi, right? Nephi, yes, as the hero's Nephi. journey, just like um, Xerxes or yeah. Odysseus yeah. or whatever. You're right. And so you're yeah. basically saying that it's a it's a literary technique. It's a type of writing that exists in, I suppose somebody could write an autobiography and still include like their own hero's journey. If that's how they feel like their life went, but it's sort yeah, of it's like, a, it's sort of like uh, something that even exists today. 
like right yeah. all the superhero movies yeah right you even literally watch any super even something that's not a superhero movie like the movie north yeah. I don't know that movie's in my mind. I think because my son mentioned it the other day. Yeah. North was a he wanted to be adopted by another family or something like that. He wanted to have some other family adopt him, so he wanted to de he wanted to throw away his old family and, and find new parents. And in a way, that's yeah. his own hero's journey through that movie. Yeah. And um, yeah, <clears throat> what else is there? Uh, so um, a lot of these the Truman a lot of these stories. The Truman Show is yeah. a hero's dream. Yeah. So one one thing that you have to really, when, when you read the book, when you read the Bible, okay, uh, you really have to, uh, you really have to appreciate the the symbolisms and the and the legends and all that kind of stuff that predate the Bible. This, these things that I gave you, I gave you on purpose because they predate the Bible itself by right, so it, a, you know a couple thousand years. Because you were you mentioned that the New Testament borrows from the Old Testament to prove the New Testament characters, especially Jesus. Yes, and the Book of Mormon, in a way, uses. Pick scripture here and there from the New Testament and the Old Testament to prove yep. things that happen in the Bible to to make truth claims. So, no, to, to no, 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 to to prove the Book of Mormon. Right to prove the Book of they're Mormon. Using, or to prove that Joseph is a prophet. That's right. That's right. They're using. And you're, so the, you're the, also the Bible. stipulating, and you're so you're also yeah. stipulating that the Old Testament borrowed from the Ekab of Gilgamesh, from all these other writings, from Hindu writings. Those stories all were in the ethos. They were in the air. And that was just right. maybe the Hebrew retelling of those stories with their own heroes, their own Semitic heroes in mind. And so that's, right. so that's an interesting, you know, catch. I know we talked about what was the name of that uh, show that talked about the death of Jesus being, you know, the sun going down below something. Oh, as winter approaches. Uh, that's uh, it. And so that's like dies a, for three days. Like the sun thing. dies for three days and then yeah. gets resurrected, and that's the start of the new year cycle, right? Yeah. Like, so, yeah. So, like worshiping that the movie, winter solstice. Yeah. So that that movie, uh, Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. It's called. It's called Zeitgeist. That's right. Uh, what you're specific is like the first 15 minutes of the movie, right? The the rest right. of the movie literally has nothing at all to do with the first 15 minutes. <laughs> and so, what they're talking about is uh, is what Gene's talking about is a. Uh, the different Jesus characters of, you know, born on December 25th, all of this kind of stuff. A lot of that stuff. Virgin birth. Is, yeah. But a lot of that stuff is the, so a lot of that stuff in the movie, the way that they put it in the movie is not true. Um, it is, it is a good movie and, and it is a great movie. Right. It's, they, it's they, a, I actually it's, watched it. It's a theory they're putting start. out. Start. <laughs> That maybe there were yeah, oral all traditions of, yeah. that, that people who, you know, 2,000 years ago, when... The, the those were came, the oral traditions. When the, Stars. When, did, when it was the time to plant your crops or harvest yeah. or do all kinds of things based on the star alignments and different things, that was crucial to their survival. Yeah, so if, if you want to go down a numerology rabbit hole, uh, Enoch in the Bible lives for 365 days and is taken away by God. Uh, the seven days, right? 365 uh, years. That's right. 360. Gosh, I'm, I'm yes. 365 and that, years. And that's symbolic of a year. I'll let you decide. There's things that are going on in that time. Okay. Right. So how they got to 365. Is part of what I'm 
going to say next here is the the 40, the number 40. Uh, look, number 40 is significant. And, and right. There's, there's what lots the Jewish, of important numbers I know. Well, the Jewish calendar, they had to plant their crops. They had to, they did their uh, jubilees and they did all these kinds of things, right? Um, that's actually one thing to read when I was talking about Josephus is the book of jubilees, right? Right. Okay. So anyways, uh, so uh, the number 40, uh, they did their festivals. Well, the Jewish calendar was wrong, right? And so they had to add time. So it comes time to the celebrate in the seven. This is where number seven comes in, right? What are their seven of? There's seven systems. Uh, if you look at Earth as not a you know, planet, right? Uh, there's seven stars that move in the sky around seven us, waters. right? That are, mm -hmm. Yeah. So these, the, the seven sisters is Pleiades, by the way. Um, right. So these things are very significant in these books, in the Bible, and in the ancient cultures, just just bottom line ancient cultures of things that was going on in the background. Remember, I like the background stuff. So like things that are happening in the background, right? Uh, that Jewish calendar ends up changing over time. Wink, wink. <laughs> Enoch is made up. And now we have 365. That, that's my own theory. That is totally my own theory, but there are, this is a rabbit trail you can go down so, uh, it, and it's a great rabbit trail go down it and you'll learn all kinds of stuff but um, that's right yeah it's so fun, there, and it's a lot of fun would, would there, would, what would you say the theme of today's presentation is if there was a, a theme like a sentence or a word um i had a religion structure <laughs> once when i was in when i was in when I was in community college, and it's the first time I'd ever heard yeah. somebody teach like this. And he had us, it was a religious class, and he had us write a paper about, I don't know, it's the first book of Genesis or the first couple or whatever it was. But use one word to describe something and then write a five or six paragraph, like a 200 word essay, why the book of Genesis is about your word. Some people took the word power and say, you know, there was power in creation. And other people took other words like love, you know, God loved the world. So he created it or something like that, you know? And so, yeah, it was yeah. interesting. So what word or what sentence would you say is about the, the first thing? And you, you said questions. <laughs> uh, question. You know, question mark. Uh, I, I want to learn too. I, I'm learning. So also. I, I would, I'm I would learning. actually say that the word might be connections, right? The dots, there yeah. are connections yeah. from stories in the Bible to stories in the Book of Mormon. There are connections between stories in the Bible. The other way that predate. I would the say Bible. it the other way. I would say it the other way around. There's stories in the Book of Mormon because the Book of 1830, okay? The Bible was written, we'll say the New Testament in the first century at best, okay? So therefore, this Book of Mormon is drawing from the Bible to va val validate itself. Does that make sense? Right. So if uh, I, I so I just want to would you say validate itself? I say sometimes to people, look, if I wrote on a piece of paper, Gene Judson is the smartest guy in the universe, and then I just pointed to that and I said, Look, it's written. I am the smartest guy. Gene Judson is the smartest guy. Because it's written, that proves that I'm the smartest guy. Right? You know, like okay. a circular, I'll, I'll, circular logic. I'll give you what I think is going on here. This is what I think. And this is my honest opinion. This is my honest opinion. I, I, but it, it is an opinion. And we know what opinions are like. Um, now I just forgot what I was going to say. Um, 
Yeah, I totally just forgot what I was gonna say. So yeah, you, uh, you sound just like me. If I don't, if I don't write stuff, what were you saying write, before? I was just saying, you know, the connection. That's right. Okay. Like, as yes, I write stuff okay. so, down, doesn't prove that it is true. Yeah. So let me let me give you an example. This is what I think is going on here. Okay. Um, I'm gonna name a book. Uh, if you've read it, because I know a lot of people have most likely read this book, but I'm just going to throw it out there. Uh, okay. The book in The Outsiders. Let me tell you what it's about. And I don't want you to read it. Don't read it. Just listen to what I'm telling you. Okay. That's all you need to do. Just listen to what I tell you. I don't want you to read the book. These two are walking through a field. Okay, they're walking through a field. They're, uh, they go off and they kill a whole bunch of people. Um, they rob a few banks. Uh, they live in a house. They live happily ever after and everything's good. Don't go read the book. I, I did reading this book, The Outsiders, okay? Um, just listen to what I say. I'll tell you about the book. If you want to know, just come and ask me. Okay, I'll, I'll be more than happy to tell you about the book. All right? If you've ever read The Outsiders, you'll know that what I just said is complete garbage. That's not at all. You see my point? Don't, don't, you know, just listen to me. That's what I think is going on with this, these books. They expect you not to read them. Because you can take this little passage and that little passage, and you can literally make it mean whatever you want it to mean. But if you read it in context, it does not mean anything at all what you mean. The Lord will provide. Look that up and see what it means. The Good Samaritan. I don't want you to look up the, the passage. I want you to read the story. What are they talking about? Why are they calling that guy a Good Samaritan? What's going on? The Lord says, I will provide. It's, it's, it's shocking. It's, it's, it shocked me. I couldn't believe it. When I first read it, I, I could not believe. I, was, I grew up in Mormonism, right? I went to Sunday school. I went to church all the way up until I was 15 years old. So, like, I, I know these stories. But when I read the book, at age 47, 46 years old, those stories do not mean anything at all what I was told they meant in Sunday school. Right. And that was very shocking to me. And it, it kind of hurt, to be honest. Like, I, like when I read the Book of Mormon, I actually got mad. I got mad. So if I, if I, I read stop the book, reading it. If I read the book to outsiders, I'm going to get mad at you that you didn't tell me what the book meant, what the book was about. You lied to me, right? That's how you feel. Yeah, 100%. That, yeah. That your pri the primary stories of the Bible are, are told in a manner that doesn't accurately refer reflect what those stories were in their context in the Bible. That's right. And then one of the tricks in the Book of Mormon is they'll use, so they'll be talking about, They'll be talking about something, and then they'll use a passage from the Book of Mormon to say, see, I told you this is what happened. Well, right. you can't use your own book to validate your own book. You, you can't do that. You're you, literally using your own book to say your own book is true. Who does it? You know? Thanks so much, Derek, for coming on the show. I, we'll, we'll have everybody I, I would. in. I would like to say one thing, uh, a scholar. I don't have any Bible study background of any kind. I am just somebody that read the Bible on a complete and total whim. Uh, things happened, and I said, hey, and literally like a week later, I was like, I'm going to read the Book of Mormon. And I noticed reading the Book of Mormon because the stories in the Bible were very fresh to me the correlations and that's what we're talking about are those correlations but i am not a scholar i want to be very clear on that i am that's not, right and we're i'm not a phd nothing 
we're just a couple of guys talking about something that you right. observed when you were reading. Yes. And yes. And we're, you know, you're tying it to other other writings and readings. And you know, Joseph Smith supposedly said that we should seek out the best books and, and learn from them, right? And so I think that that's a, there's a, there are a lot of good books. You know, they're yeah, you know, maybe comic books where you have to fill in coloring books maybe might not be considered yeah. a good book. But some of the comic yeah. books are, you know, what do they call them now? Graphic novels. They graphic novels, yeah. They have stories. They're they're trying to teach morals sometimes, you know, the yeah. fight of good versus evil or whatever. And so yeah, we're just uh, a couple of guys talking. If people have any comments, put them down in the comment section. The next time we uh, do a show, we'll try to review them, and you know we'll we'll see. We're trying to get some some thought going, some you know some discussion flowing, group. like a study group, like a virtual study group. And so, and we'll see if people like it. We'll see if people comment about things. We'll see if they come up with their own things, or if they say Derek's a full of hogwash, or um, you know whatever. <laughs> Please keep and, the comments I ask. Just keep them nice. I'm trying to. Yeah, just <laughs> right. If you're going to say something, yeah. put put some other research. Constructive criticism. Right. Yeah. Bring bring out some of your own examples of something that you could say. And so, so anyway, this is an experiment. We're just going to try to do what we can do. If you like this show, like and subscribe. Stay tuned. And and. Stay tuned. We'll, we're happy to see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.